Hello, so here we are finding solutions to TIMO for 2022 23 for the Hong Kong region. The time allowed was 90 minutes, and this paper is for primary five. All right, let's move to question number one. All right. Let me highlight as I read along. Sophia has a few chocolates. We do not have that number right now. If 25 is added to that number, the sum is then divided by 8. So there's a series of operations that we keep on doing to the number of chocolates she has. So first we add 25, then divide by 8, and then we multiply by 35. And finally, 165 is subtracted from that number. And the answer is 115. How many chocolates does Sophia have? Now, in this question, it is suggested. You can start from the beginning, but it will be very, very complicated, and it will involve variables. Uh, so if you move backwards, that is much easier. So let's start with the, pro with the answer that she gets at the end. So she has 115 at the end of all the calculations. Let's move backward. So first, we have to... This says 165 is subtracted. That means in the reverse calculation, we have to add 165. So the answer is 280. Moving to the previous one, multiplied by 35. Now, because we are moving backwards, this was multiplied by 35. So in this case, we have to divide by 35. Now you can see 35 times two, two groups of 35 is 70. And we know 70 times 4 is 280, so this can cancel out into 8 parts. This answer is 8. Now moving to the previous one, divided by 8. Now because this was divided by 8 in the as we go forward, when we are going backward, we have to multiply by 8. Our answer till now is 8, so the next step is 8 multiplied by 8, which is 64. Let's look at the step before that. It is 25 is added, but of course I'm moving backwards, so I have to subtract it. 64 minus 25. This becomes 9 and 3. So 39 is our answer. And just to make sure that your answer is correct, what you could have done is you can just go over the answers right from the beginning and go over the answer and forward and see if it all works. So let me remove this as well. So if we were starting with 39, just to make sure our answer is correct. So 25 is added, so we add 25. So that is 14. 64, you then divide by eight. So 64 divided by eight is eight. Then multiplied by 35, you can multiply by 35 to 80. And then 165 is subtracted, so you have 280. Take away 165, and you will see 511. You did get 115 that was mentioned in the answer. So you have confirmed that your answer is correct. So the answer that we were looking for is in fact 39. All right, moving on to the next question. Moving to question number three. It takes Rachel's 25 minutes to finish a workout. He has to take a nine minute break after every workout. We have to remember after every workout is a nine minute break. And then he continues to finish another workout. How many minutes does he need to finish four workouts? Now, in order to understand how, we know he's doing four workouts, but how many breaks does he need? You can do a simple one. So let me write down here. So he's doing a workout. Then he needs a break, nine-minute break. Then he does another workout. Then he needs a break. Then he needs a workout, and then he needs another break before he can do the final workout. Now, we do know that he's finished four workouts, so he finished the workout here. He does not need a break to start another workout. So this is the part that we will stop on. So we can see that he has finished four workouts. That means 25 times four, which is 100, 100 minutes. And because he has needed just three breaks, 
a nine minute break each so that's 27 minutes nine times three so in total he has needed 100 minutes and 27 so that's a total of 127 minutes so that's our answer for the question he needs 127 minutes all right, this is question number four. It required a little bit of working out, so I cleared the space. Today is Thursday, 16th June. Which day of the week is 29th of December? So we have to, in order to work it out, we have to calculate how many days are exactly there between 16th of June and 29th of December. As we all know, if 16th June is Thursday, that means exactly seven days from then, 16 plus seven is 23, 23rd June will again be a Thursday. Another 7th, 30th of June will another be will be another Thursday. So if we can count how many days are there in between and then think about how many weeks has passed in all this time, we'll be able to work out what day is it on 29th of December. So let's lay out. So this is June running. Then it will be July, August, September, October, November, and December. Now, because uh, let me mark the months that will have 31 days. So this here, here, these are the months which have 31 days. All other months written here have 30 days. So let's now work out how many days are passed in between the two days because it's already 16th of June running so that means this month has 30 days that means only 14 days are remaining in the month of June July whole July is remaining that's 31 31 days in August 30 days in September 31 days in October 30 days in November and December we only have to think about till 29 December so only 29 days now when you add these numbers days up all these numbers up you can do a column method it turns out to be 196 days now in order to find the the day we need to divide this by seven to calculate how many weeks has it been and when you divide it you can use a column you can use a bus stop method or written method to find out this is 28 no remainder exactly 28 that means between 16th of june and 29th december there have been exactly 28 weeks if there have been exactly 28 weeks that means we started on a thursday and that means on 29 December, we will also end on a Thursday. So the answer to this question is a Thursday. All right, we are on to question number five. And this requires a lot of visualization to work out the answer. Given there are 25 different classes, at least how many students do we need to choose so that we can guarantee at least three of them cho are chosen from the same class. So remember, we have 25 different classes. Imagine these are all classes. There are 25 different classes, and we are choosing children at random. So they might be coming from the same class. So it might be that the first three children chosen are from the same class, and we finish what we have been asked to. But we have to consider all possible scenarios. We have to consider that Every child is coming from a different class, but how many minimum ch children can we choose so we can guarantee three of them are from the same class? All right, now, before moving to two, let's choose how many students do we need so that we can guarantee at least two of them are from the same class. Now, if I choose, because there are 25 different classes, if I go on to choose 26 students, now, they might very well come from the same class already, all of them, and that solves my issue. But in the worst possible scenario, if they're all coming from different classes, one one child from each different class, but since there are only 25 classes and we have chosen 25 students, that means there is a child from a repeating class. That means we have chosen a child from the same class before and we had to come back to that very class to choose the 26 student so if we choose 26 students we can guarantee two students are from the same class 
don't know which class, but they are from the same class. My, our question is asking, we need three children to be the same class. That means we have to go another round, 25 in the first slot, one child from each class. This is the worst possible scenario. Uh, one child, another group uh, from the other classes, that means 50. But if I go for 51 students, if I go for 51 students, and again, in the best possible scenario, there are more than three children from the same class, but we have to guarantee. So that means out of 51, 20, because there are 25 classes, 25 must have come if all the students are coming for different classes. The next 25, of course, they have to come from different classes. And the next one has to come from one of these classes that were chosen already. So there is one student at least which has appeared here in the second count and here as well. So we can guarantee that that child... Uh, is coming from a class. Three children are coming from the same class. So 51 students, if we choose 51 students, we can guarantee three of them are from the same class from the 25 different classes that have been given to us.